On either side the river lie, long fields of barley and of rye, that clothe the wold and meet the sky. And through the field the road runs by to many towered Camelot. The yellow leaved water lily, the green sheaved daffodilly, trembled in the water chilly round about Shalott. Willows whiten, aspens shiver, the sunbeam showers break and quiver in the stream that runneth ever by the island in the river flowing down to Camelot. Four grey walls and four grey towers overlook a space of flowers and the silent isle embowers the Lady of Shalott. Underneath the bearded barley, the reaper, reaping late and early, hears her ever chanting cheerily. Like an angel, singing clearly, o'er the streams of Camelot. Piling the sheaves in furrows airy, beneath the moon, the reaper weary listening whispers, "'Tis the fairy, Lady of Shalott." The little isle is all enrailed with a rose fence and overtrailed with roses. By the marge unhailed the shallop flitteth silken sailed, skimming down to Camelot. A pearl garland winds her head, she leaneth on a velvet bed, full royally apparelled, the Lady of Shalott. No time hath she to sport and play, A charmed web she weaves all way. A curse is on her, If she stay her weaving, Either day or night, To look down to Camelot. She knows not what the curse may be, Therefore she weaveth steadily, Therefore no other care hath she, The Lady of Shalott. She lives with little joy or fear. Over the water, running near, the sheep bell tinkles in her ear. Before he hangs a mirror clear, reflecting towered Camelot. And as the maybe web she whirls, she sees the surly village churls, and the red cloaks of market girls pass onward from Shalott. Sometimes a troop of damsels glad, an abbot on an ambling pad, sometimes a curly shepherd lad, or long-haired page in crimson clad, goes by to towered Camelot. And sometimes through the mirror blue, the knights come riding two and two, she hath no loyal knight and true, the Lady of Shalott. But in her web she still delights To weave the mirror's magic sights, For often through the silent nights A funeral, with plumes and lights and music, Came from Camelot. Or when the moon was overhead, Came two young lovers lately wed. I am half sick of shadows, Said the Lady of Shalott. A bow shot from her boa eaves, he rode between the barley sheaves. The sun came dazzling through the leaves and flamed upon the brazen greaves of bold Sir Lancelot. A red cross knight forever kneeled to a lady in his shield that sparked on the yellow field beside remote Shalott. The gemmy bridle glittered free like to some branch of stars we see hung in the golden galaxy. The bridal bells rang merrily as he rode down from Camelot, and from his blazon baldric slung a mighty silver bugle hung, and as he rode his armour rung beside remote Shalott. All in the blue unclouded weather thick jeweled shone the saddle leather, the helmet and the helmet feather burned like one burning flame together as he rode down from Camelot. As often through the purple night, below the starry clusters bright, some bearded meteor, trailing light, 
moves over green shallot. His broad clear brow in sunlight glowed. On burnished hooves his war horse trode. From underneath his helmet flowed his coal black curls as on he rode, as he rode down from Camelot. From the bank and from the river he flashed into the crystal mirror. Tiralura, Tiralura, sang Sir Lancelot. She left the web, she left the loom, she made three paces through the room, she saw the water flower bloom, she saw the helmet and the plume, she looked down to Camelot. Out flew the web and floated wide, the mirror cracked from side to side. The curse has come upon me, cried the Lady of Shalott. In the stormy east wind straining, the pale yellow woods were waning. The broad stream in his banks complaining. Heavily the low sky raining over towered Camelot. Outside the isle a shallow boat, beneath a willow lay afloat. Below the carven stern she wrote, the Lady of Shalott. A cloud-white crown of pearl she dight, all raiment in the snowy white that loosely flew, her zone in sight clasped with one blinding diamond bright, her eyes fixed wide on Camelot. Though the squally east wind keenly blew, with folded arms serenely by the water stood the queenly Lady of Shalott. With a steady stony glance, like some bold seer in a trance, beholding all his own mischance, mute, with a glassy countenance, she looked down to Camelot. It was the closing of the day. She loosed the chain and down she lay. The broad stream bore her away, the Lady of Shalott. As when to sailors while they roam, by creeks and outfalls far from home, rising and dropping with the foam, from dying swans wild warblings come, blown shoreward. So to Camelot, still as the boat had wound along, the willowing hills and fields among. They heard her chanting her death song, the Lady of Shalott. A long-drawn carol, mournful, holy, she chanted loudly, chanted lowly, till her eyes were dark and holy, and her smooth face sharpened slowly, turned to tower Camelot. For ere she reached upon the tide the first house by the waterside, singing in her song she died, the Lady of Shalott. Under tower and balcony, by garden wall and gallery, a pale, pale corpse she floated by, dead cold, between the houses high, dead into towered Camelot. Knight and burgher, Lord and dame, to the planked wharfage came. Below the stern they read her name, the Lady of Shalott. They crossed themselves, their stars they blessed. Knight, minstrel, abbot, squire and guest. They lay a parchment on her breast that puzzled more than all the rest the well-fed wits at Camelot. The web was woven curiously, the charm is broken utterly. Draw near and fear not, this is I, the Lady of Shalott. The Lady of Shalott, written by Alfred Lord Tennyson, narrated by Jordan Harling.